I think you've uh, done a good job talking about the, uh, uh, I'd say the acknowledged lesson that you've learned in terms of these uh, deposits uh, for clearing and the important risk management issue for your firm. So I'd like to uh, turn to uh, follow up on some of the discussions uh, about retail service uh, that you've also touched on today. Do you have a call center generally for Robinhood investors? Thank you for, for that question, Congressman. Um, and I, I want to start by saying customer service is fundamental to everything that we do. And it's one of the areas where we're investing the most. We have customer service centers in a number of states, Colorado, Florida, Texas, and Arizona. And we're looking to expand aggressively. Well, do you have a call center that I can call a 1-800 number if I'm having a trouble in the middle of the trading day? We, we do offer Congressman live phone support uh, in app for certain use cases. We're expanding that as fast as we can. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. I mentioned earlier, options, yeah. advanced options cases, yeah. as well as account takeovers, uh, which typically happen through a customer's email, personal email who's been compromised. And the feedback's been great. And we're looking to expand the live phone channel, as well as make improvements to our email channel and even upstream within the product. Thank you, thank you, that's, that's helpful. And on the subject of uh, margin and options, you've talked about, about that today, but uh, you know, in, uh, I've spent uh, 40 years in this business and been the general securities principal in three different firms and this issue of granting margin and option approval to retail clients is always an important issue. You've addressed that today, so I want to turn to a different topic that has not been raised, and that's low dollar stocks. As I understand it, your policy and procedure manual simply said that you allow low dollar stocks if they're on an exchange, but many, many brokerage firms are very reticent to allow retail investors to invest in uh, stocks that are under $5. Could you address that issue today? Yes, I'd be happy to, Congressman. So Robinhood allows uh, customers to trade in and invest in exchange-listed securities. So that's the objective criteria that we use. And it actually excludes several types of securities that customers commonly request to trade in. So on Robinhood, you can't trade over-the-counter bulletin boards, except in limited cases where a listed stock falls to over-the-counter. You can't trade pink sheets. And uh, of course, you can't short sell or enter uh, undefined risk options trades. Okay. So our objective criteria involve whether exchanges list these securities. Thank you. And I think that probably, I'm sure you'll reevaluate that in the, after the, these effects. Let me turn to uh, Ms. Schulop. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, the Wall Street uh, Bets Reddit platform. I'm curious when you think about the obligation of this SEC pending investigation, Based on, your, based on your FINRA background, do you think the SEC should look at the bulletin board participants under Section uh, 9A2 on potentially inducing trading uh, in a certain direction? Is that worthy of their review? Thank you for the question, Congressman. I think that there's been little evidence to this time that there's been any sort of false or deceptive conduct taking place on the Wall Street's bed that's forum. That does not mean, though, that I think that the SEC should not take a deeper look. Um, because of the anonymity in the forum, uh, there could have been people that were engaging in deceptive behavior um, that's not readily apparent to outside um, or to the public. So I do think the SEC should look. Um, but, but to this point, I've seen very little that would meet a test for manipulation, which generally involves false or deceptive behavior.